Hi, this is Mike Harrison and Bridget. This is Soft Magnetics Hard Topics. So, so what are we going to do today? All right. So today we're going to talk about we got a question for you. Uh-huh. We got two cores here. This guy and this little snap it. Okay. Both suppression cores, both made out of the same material. Which one between big one, little one, do you think has more impedance? Uh, I would probably guess the bigger one. Right. But it's not. Okay. It's the little one. Okay. That's why so. I have a marketing. Um. <laughs> so this little core actually produces, they're fairly similar, but this little core actually would produce more impedance over the same frequency range than this large core. Why? So Y goes into the geometries of the core. So you can see they're about the same thickness. I mean, this one's in a plastic yeah. case, but the actual ferrite core inside of here is not appreciably thicker. The outer diameter is a lot smaller and the inner diameter is a lot smaller. And what that's indicating to us is the magnetic path length is low. So when you're looking at the impedance of a core, um, if you wanted to normalize it by material, you'd look at air core inductance. The air core inductance is going to be a, from a geometry standpoint, a function of the cross-sectional area of a core over the magnetic path length. So for this one, we have a smaller cross-section, yes, but we have a way smaller magnetic path length. So we wind up with the same or a higher air core inductance, all other things being equal with the material, you're going to wind up with more impedance mm. when you have higher air core inductance. So why would someone choose this one with the less? So, yeah, why would you ever use a gigantic core like this relative to a small one? So the obvious answer is you can't fit, mm -hmm. you know, Space. yeah, your cable's too big for this little core. I mean, that right there is a very simple reason. But there's a couple other reasons why you might use a uh, larger core. So, you know, the larger core, yeah, it's going to be more expensive. It's going to be larger. It's heavier. But what you could do with this larger core is you could wrap multiple turns on that larger core. Now, every turn that you add to that core is going to increase the impedance, at least at the lower frequencies before we start getting into parasitics of the winding. Um, it's going to increase by roughly the square of the number of turns. So one turns the impedance, two turns, four times the impedance, three turns, nine times the impedance, so on and so forth. Um, can't do that with a tiny core. Uh, another reason is going to be current handling. So ferrites to rate when they have used differentially and with higher currents. And even at relatively low currents, the... Uh, H field is increasing and you're going to get a drop in the impedance or technically a slight increase and then a drop in the impedance. The H value, as say it's one amp, we'll call it one amp. The H value for this core is 0 0.09 Orsteds. For this core, you're just about one Orsted or thereabouts. Um, this core is going to the rate the impedance is going to drop way faster than something like this. Mm. So there's different reasons why you might have a big core right. other than just needing a lot of impedance. So if we wanted to increase the impedance of this core, obviously you can shrink the outer inner diameters down. You'll get more impedance. The other thing you could do is make the core longer or stack a few of them. Mm. So if you had several of these cores end to end, you're going to increase that air core inductance as you're increasing this length of the core. Mm. And that'll just scale kind of linearly. And is this a standard part? This is a standard part. Oh, okay. So you don't have to do anything special. No. If you wanted to prototype, you know, see the effect of making this core longer. I mean, yeah. from a simple terms, you could just stack a few of these on top of one another. Or you can make one. Or you can make a custom larger one. Hmm. Um, easy to stack them to try. Um, maybe less practical to produce right. than just one large. Well, I mean, a super long version of this is going to weigh a ton. So. Right. 
there's probably not ways of time. <laughs> there's probably other ways to make that um, you know such as thinner core with more windings um, so, wow yeah very cool and it's a women's accessory it yeah <laughs> very stylish <laughs> um do we have any other questions about this that people might be asking uh you know the impedance so the impedance per winding uh we usually have characteristic curves mm -hmm. on each of our part numbers that'll show you one two three five turns on a core so you can kind of see how that impedance response it's hard to make a just a outright calculator or say a formula for mm -hmm. that because you when you start as soon as you start adding multiple turns and windings in there you start looking at parasitics of the wire and stuff and then it becomes a question of you know wire diameter you're using how closely the turns are spaced from each other you know there's a whole bunch of other factors that make it a lot more difficult to predict than just saying you know I have X number of turns on this core, what's the impedance? Um, it gets a little more complicated than just that. Yeah. But um, that's a pretty common question is how many turns will I get? We try to characterize them so that you'll have a good idea. Uh, ultimately, when it's, it's wound, it gets less predictable. And, mm. you know, sometimes the solution, as annoying as it is, is to wind one and see where you right. wind up. Well. Well, that's cool. Well, thank you for this fun fact. Yeah. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to comment, and uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Bye. Bye.